Today we're going to be looking at a few examples that cover a topic called vertical motion. So put a heading on your paper. You're going to need some graph paper. Um, so as an object falls, its speed continues to increase and increase. So its height above ground decreases at a faster and faster rate. If we ignore air resistance, you can model the object's height with a quadratic function h equals negative 16t squared plus c where the height h is in feet and the time t is in seconds and the object's initial height is c. Okay, so let's take a look at a problem. It says an acorn drops from a tree branch 20 feet above the ground. The function h equals negative 16t squared plus 20 gives the height h of the acorn in feet after t seconds. What is the graph of the quadratic function and about what time does the acorn hit the ground? And so you can notice that for this problem, We've taken C, the initial height, and since they told us the tree branch was 20, they substituted in that 20 there. Okay, so we're going to take a look here. Okay, it asks us to figure out what time it hits the ground. Okay, and it also asks us to like come up with the graph. So, um, what you'd want to do here is calculate the um, axis of symmetry. And in this case, because there is no linear term, then our b or our opposite of b is 0, and 2 times a is sort of irrelevant there, but um, it gives us an axis of symmetry at the y-axis, x equals 0. From there, we're going to fill out a table of values where we plug 0 into our table for our first value. With 0 as an input, you can imagine that 20 is our y-intercept or our initial height, okay, and then um, we can plug numbers in. I don't know that I would plug in a half, but we continue to like input and get outputs until we have a graph that crosses the x-axis. So it's really important that it crossed the x-axis because we're trying to figure out at what time is it at height zero right there. And so we can see that, um, you know, that it crosses a little bit after one second. So at one second, it's still at four feet of height, but then by one and a half seconds, it's already at negative 16 feet in height, which is not actually really going to happen because the acorn's not going to drive 16 feet into the ground, but it gives us the accurate curve that we can use to predict the time it will hit the ground. Let's do one together. Okay, this one I would like you to um, copy down the function. So here we have um, the same acorn, sort of, um, but it's dropping from a higher branch, and so the function in theory, remains the same, but now we've got that plus 70 as our c value because it's starting from a tree branch at 70 feet. It says, what is the graph of the function, and at about what time does the acorn hit the ground? And then we're going to go on to discuss a reasonable domain and range for the original function in problem 5. So let's get started, um, and I always like to start by copying the problem. And then step number one is to find the axis of symmetry. And then step number two is to make a table of values. And I'm going to leave myself some room to work here. Okay, and you can work alongside me here by plugging in the zero wherever you see um, a t. So we're going to plug in time zero, and then obviously we have just the y-intercept here, zero, 70. All right, now I'm going to go up by increments of one, so we get one after one second. Okay, I got 54 out, then I'm going to plug in a 2, and I can do some calculations. Okay, and then I'm going to plug in a 3, and I can do some calculations, and I get negative 74 out. Okay, so I'm going to take just a minute and graph these. You can see I've got my graph over here on the right, and when you're doing a real-world problem, it's important to put labels on your axes. Okay, and I noticed that I was going to have to change the scale of my graph, so I made um, each one count as 10. Um, going up the y-axis, I kept the x-axis the same. All right, so now I'm going to plot some points. So at 0, 70, the acorn starts out here. After one second, it's at about 54 feet. After two seconds, it's at about 6 feet. And after that, it's going to be below, you know, I can see how 
the trajectory is, is falling here. So to be honest, I don't know that I'm going to plot 3, negative 74, but I might try, and if I had my calculator, I might try something like 2.1 to try to hone it in. But it really does say about what time does the acorn hit the ground. So I can make an answer that says about 2 plus seconds. And you notice I get that from both the graph, or I could get it like right from the equation that I realized that the height of y is not going to be quite zero at two seconds, so it'll, a little bit after that. So then it says, what are the reasonable domain and range um, for this? And so um, the domain is usually all real numbers, but since we're talking about time as the x set of x values, then our domain is going to be all real numbers x is greater than or equal to zero. On our range for this problem, although it asked about the original one, is going to be all real numbers y is less than or equal to 70 because that's where the acorn started. Okay, let's try a different one. Okay, this one says um, if you used h equals negative 16 t squared plus c to find the height above ground of a falling object from an initial height c, this time we're going to talk about when an object is projected into the air given an upward initial upward velocity v continues with no additional force on it like so no air resistance the formula h equals negative 16 t squared plus vt plus c gives its approximate height above the ground so let's work on this together or actually let's just read through this one together during halftime at a basketball game, a slingshot launches t-shirts at the crowd. A t-shirt is launched with an initial upward velocity of 72 feet per second, and the t-shirt is caught 35 feet above the court. How long will it take the t-shirt to reach its maximum height? What is the maximum height? What is the range of the function that models the height of the t-shirt over time? Okay, so here we go, and you can see that we've plugged into the given function. We've plugged in um, our initial upward velocity. And this 5 here is the starting height of the t-shirt when you can see these guys launching it from the t-shirt slingshot. Okay, um, since the coefficient of t squared here, our a term, is negative, the parabola opens downward and the vertex is the maximum point. Just to give you an idea what this would look like, let's do a quick sketch. Right, I realize my starting height is 5 feet, so it's not quite at the origin, and it's going to reach a maximum height and then come down and to complete the parabola. Um, all right, so what I'm interested in is if I'm interested in the maximum height and at what time it reaches that maximum height, then what I really need to find is just the vertex, um, which lies on the axis of symmetry. So let's do that. X is equal to the opposite of B over 2A. Okay, so there we have our axis of symmetry. So if we realize that this point is at 2.25, and since this axis is modeling time, then I know at 2.25 seconds after launch, it's going to reach its maximum velocity. However, um, okay, the t-shirt was caught at 35 feet. So if um, 35 feet is like, like, let's say right here, you can imagine that a person might have caught it right on the, its upward trajectory or on its downward path, they could have caught it there, but they were really asking us about the range of the t-shirt. And the range is, um, really, if the t-shirt starts out at 5 and goes up, with a quick calculation, I realize that this is 2.25 comma 86, so it goes all the way up to 86 feet and then comes back down and then it gets caught right there, then um, I realize that the range is y is all real numbers greater than or equal to 5 and less than or equal to 86. So that's going to be the range of the t-shirt. Let's have you try one. Um, so if you're feeling confident, you can press pause and try this on your own. It's a very similar problem. I've copied the uh, equation down for you. And if not, you can work on it with me. Okay, so there was my step one to find the axis of symmetry. You could see me doing that using the formula. And step two is going to be to find the vertex. Okay, in order to find the vertex, I'm going to plug into the formula where t equals 2. Do some calculation, and I realize that the height is 69, so the vertex is 2, 69. So I realize that after two seconds, the t-shirt will reach its maximum height at 69 feet. 
Okay, so I've answered two of the questions already. One is how long will it take the t-shirt to reach its maximum height? Two seconds. How far above court level will it be? 69 feet. And the last question is what is the range of the function? So the t-shirt starts at five feet. So I know that the height, which is my y variable in this case, my dependent variable, um, is going to be greater than or equal to five feet. Okay, and it's also going to be less than or equal to its maximum height, 69. So that's how you could write the range. I prefer to write it in compact form where you say greater than or equal to 5 and less than or equal to 69 feet in this way. Okay, that's it. Um, I will see you in class tomorrow. Thanks.